Hi, I'm Lu- Whoa, whoa, uh, whoa. Uh, <laughs> Lady Dickin. Um, <laughs> I wish. Hi, I'm Lily Evans. Oh, no, I'm not! Hi, I'm Lily Potter. And I am Remus Lupin. Welcome <laughs> to tea time. <laughs> Clink? Clink. Clink. <laughs> the thing we've been requested to talk about is relationships and specifically how to maintain them. Mm. Which you have a little bit of experience in. I'm a maintainer. Yeah. You're also a maintainer. Um, unfortunately, I've had to maintain in my lifetime. Mm. Quite a bit. Someone getting into a relationship for the first time, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? Are they the right person for you? Oh. Are you doing it just because you want to be in a relationship or because you actually like the person? Oh. How did you know? Did you. When you got into your relationship, did you know that was the right person at the time? No. Or? No. <coughs> no. No? Oh, no, I didn't. didn't. Just one, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three, just sort of <coughs> glowing. Mm, it sort of happened, really. I think that's how you know it's the right person. It just develops. Mm. What about you? Because he was hounding after you like a dog for seven years. Yeah, I, I feel like I was more beaten down into it. <laughs> It was a bit of like a, mm -hmm. eventually you go on the pity date and you're like, mm. maybe, and when I was on the pity date, he was quite sweet. He was, he was quite sweet. And it wasn't like an immediate thing. It, it was when he started to back off and give me space that I started to see him more as a person than as a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was a stalker. A little bit. Mm. But teenage boys, right? Teenagers. <laughs> No, I don't think there's any healthy teenage relationship, really. I mean, they can be. They can be, but I think a lot of it is to maintain a relationship, you have to reflect and look at yourself as well as the person you're with. Because mm. as much as that person can improve and you can see their flaws, you need to look at yourself and see, all right, so what can I do to improve as well? Like there is a give and a take in every relationship. And it depends if you actually want to be in the relationship. Yeah. Which you clearly didn't for a long, long time. It was when he started to back off and give me space and treat me like a human being. Mm. And I started to see that he was quite sweet. Like the way he acts with you guys and how he protect you from the, the other people. He dropped the facade. Yeah, he stopped trying to be something he wants. Mm. Maybe that's the advice that we give. That you don't have to be someone else you need someone to love you for yourself don't be a shaman yeah Dip it up it's up front. it's tiring mm. i mean i've been in oh, i've been in relationships before where i've tried to be someone that i'm not or who the other person expects me to be and that's it's hard to maintain mm. you can't keep that going for very long because you get tired and burn out and you get stressed and you take that stress out on them. Make sure you yourself are in the place to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have enough time for yourself and for the other person. Yeah, knowing how that person communicates their love and how to best communicate your love for that person. Mm -hmm. And it might be slightly different. You know, yeah. They might show their love in a different way and you might mm -hmm. show it entirely differently but you need to learn yeah. to appreciate how they actually how they communicate. Yeah, tell you without telling you directly, potentially. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. if someone is into physical touch and you're more of a quality time, you have to give that give and pull on both sides. Mm -hmm. You may find it easier to show that you love someone just by sitting with them and spending time with them. Mm -hmm. But if they need something different, you need to figure out the best way to communicate that for them. Yeah, give and take, push and pull. Yeah, exactly. Equilibrium. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with arguments in your relationship? Uh, we've never really argued. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> uh, no, but honestly we haven't because if one of us is upset or angry at the other, then we discuss it first. We never develop into a fight or an argument or a disagreement. We try to understand where the other person is coming from. Mm -hmm. So if Sirius is upset, I'll ask him why, how, how can I help? And vice versa. We just sort of understand each other's emotion at the time. We don't rise to it and get upset just because the other person's upset. Don't get angry just because they're angry. Talk to them because sometimes they just need a little bit of help in like communicating their emotion, getting that little bit. I think me and James agreed pretty early on that 
we wouldn't go to bed on an argument and we wouldn't leave the house on an argument. Mm, never let the sun set. No, exactly. Because once a feeling has bubbled over into the next day, it's something sour and it's hard to talk about. And I think being able to talk for your feelings and figure out where you stand is a very important thing in maintaining a balance in a relationship. It's... Communication. It's a, yeah, it's communication. It's a give and pull. You just talk to the other person because otherwise they are going to be guessing, they're going to be getting paranoid, upset. Yeah, trying to read another person is hard mm-hmm. at the easiest of times. Yes. When it's someone <laughs> that you care deeply about, and you don't want to upset and you're trying to guess their feelings you're gonna get 10 steps ahead and end up t- mm-hmm. putting a foot wrong because you're trying to figure out where your feet should be and you're going to make an assumption it might be right but it might be wrong it's normally wrong okay. it's normally <laughs> wrong so yeah talk to your partner and yeah ask your partner to talk to you as well i suppose all of it bubbles down to getting a healthy level of communication with your partner is the easiest way to maintain that relationship but getting into the relationship to begin with you need to know and love yourself before you can offer that to somebody else Mm. and if there's anything you don't like about yourself if your partner knows you that helps and you tell them yeah honestly Mm -hmm. yeah you don't um let that build up inside you as a negative emotion listen to your friends as well And sometimes your friends can see when th- something is wrong. Mm, if you're in, in an unhealthy yeah. relationship, the people that care about you most. Don't let your partner be the only person you talk to. Mm-hmm. Because that's, in itself, that isn't healthy. To have a wider support network, even if it's your family, even if it's mm-hmm. just someone else. If you're in, with a partner, it's a partnership. It's yes. two people you can't run it just by yourself they can't run it by themselves and if it seems very one-sided you need to address that yeah one way or another uh-huh. yeah a hundred percent yes mm-hmm. you do live with james Potter. <laughs> i live my sure own list is extraordinary circumstances <laughs> my therapist hears about them all regularly oh. that's that's actually a good point actually to i think the best way to improve your relationship with somebody else i've said this already but it is to reflect on yourself and how you can change and be clear on that with your partner. Mm-hmm. Need to open the conversation of, is there anything I can do to help you? Is there anything I can do to communicate better? Is there anything I can do to make you feel more loved? Is there anything that you need from me? But in the same time, you have to be able to ask, is, are you able to do this thing for can me? Can you do this for me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you support me because I've supported you? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. One partner might be more of an emotional talker who's going to bring their feelings up more and talk through them more and they are more inclined to do that. Whereas another partner may be more into the physical side of things and may initiate more physical touch or anything like that. But you'll find that between the two of you, you'll never hit 50-50, but you'll hit a balance that works. It's constantly moving maybe like that as well. It also depends on the, um, the mood, like the situation at the time. Someone might be more upset, someone might yeah, be happier. Yeah, exactly. It's always constantly moving. It's important to try and see from their perspective without assuming their perspective. Mm-hmm. Don't constantly take. Yeah. Or don't constantly give. Yes. I think that's the side we talk about the least. Mm. In giving so much is draining. Whoever you're dating, they're never going to be a perfect person. They're always going to have some form of traits irritate you or get on your nerves and being able to find the ones that you can live with and cope with and kind of just to work with you i think that's an important side of it i think i'm lucky because i don't have any of those irritations <laughs> you're very lucky <laughs> i think for me with james my biggest irritation is also the reason why i love him the most so it's he drives me up the wall, mm. but the same like chaotic energy that drives me insane is fueled by the love and the passion and the joy mm-hmm. that made me fall for him in the end. The craziness. Yeah. <laughs> Being okay with some negative traits is fine. Mm-hmm. Just make sure it's not too many. I think that's the thing of every relationship is different but as long as you are not compromising yourself and your partner is not compromising themselves either that's the most important thing I would say that's a pretty good analysis Mm. so if you are unhappy with anything talk about it yeah I hope that uh, amends can be made (laughs) 
So that's it. Maintain a relationship, communicate. Don't keep secrets. And just be yourself. Yeah. Clink? Clink. Stay magical. Stay magical.